This is the Paul Green Comedy Podcast, a podcast by a dreamer for dreamers out there. It is February 28th, 2024. This is episode 91. I am a stand-up comedian, an actor, an improviser, and I am documenting my rise to fame and glory. <laughs> so, uh, yesterday... Interesting day. I really had just some busy work I had to get done with the old day job. And also I had an opportunity to um, work with a comedian friend of mine who had sent me one of his sets to review and help him punch out. And that was really fun and really flattering that somebody who, again, I expect... I respect and admire would look up to me and want me to look over his material. That takes a tremendous amount of humility, a lot of vulnerability to let another artist into your world and take what you have written down and give their thoughts on it. So that was very cool to have that opportunity. Um, Got to play some basketball last night with a good buddy of mine who's an independent filmmaker and is on the verge of releasing a movie. Um, I don't know how much I can talk about it, so I will have to stay vague with the details. But really, really enjoy talking to him and catching up with him. Um, he's actually going to be on the podcast. Uh, we don't know when. Um so I'll let him fend for himself and talk about what he feels like he can talk about. But um, I was able to catch up with him. You know, we talked a little bit before playing basketball last night, and I just sort of caught him up on some of the drama going on in my life. And <laughs> he's just so cool. And he just said, you know, there's a certain way that people who aren't successful behave. And in essence was saying the way that you were treated is consistent with behavior of, uh, of people who are not really successful. They aren't, they aren't really, they don't really have what it takes. And he just goes, everybody who I know who has been really successful, especially in the entertainment arena. There's just a way that they behave and the way that they treat people and a way that they show up. And, you know, that is just not consistent with the the behavior that led to me severing uh, some ties recently. And yes, I'm still talking about it. It's been a week and a half. I will get to a point to where it is still not affecting me and I'm thinking about it every single day, but it was a pretty dramatic. Um, I've, I, I, I don't have the emotional attachment. I now I've released the emotion, so I'm pretty at peace with it. But I still am now. But now I'm in the intellectual analysis part of that. And what do I? What did I learn about this? And what does this mean to me? And what do I choose it to mean? Which is the beautiful thing about life is. You know, there's what happens, but then there is the meaning that we attach to what happens. And what's so fascinating about that is the meaning we attach to it is 100% our choice. It may not seem like a choice because maybe the meaning we attach to it has been programmed into us or it's been a pattern of ours our entire life. And so it seems real and it seems... um it seems factual. Um, but at the end of the day, it's it's a it's a decided meaning. You know, somebody treats me in a manner that feels disrespectful. I choose what that means. Does that mean I did something wrong? Does that mean they did something wrong? Does that mean I am a lesser human that I think that they're a lesser human do I choose to mean that that means uh, I, you know I don't deserve love or you know um, 
Does this mean that I'm going to be a failure? Does this mean that, you know, people don't love me? Does this mean people don't respect me? Does this mean that, um, you know, there's, there's an infinite amount of meanings that we can attach to anything that happens to us, big or small. Oh, I got cut off on the, uh, I got cut off on the road today. That means that all human beings are inconsiderate a-holes. That's what that means. Or it could mean like, oh, you want to what? That person must be having a rough day and maybe they're in a big hurry and, uh, you know, they are trying to get to a hospital because they just found that somebody they loved is in the emergency room, you know? And so it's like, there's an event that occurs there seems to be an immediate meaning attached to what that event means and that meaning is a choice and then that meaning leads to an emotional feeling about and it's not about the event it's about the meaning we attach to to the event and then that emotion will then dictate our next action what am I turning into? Some sort of like Tony Robbins or some sort of Dr. Phil here? I probably didn't make that up, but that's that seems to be... Um, I'm sure I didn't make that up. I'm sure I've read that somewhere. But... But I think that's that's really significant to... At least when it comes to major decisions or when you know things like what I experienced happen is during the analysis phase go okay so what actually happened what was the story I told myself what did that story what emotional reaction did that story give me and then what was the action that I took because of this of the belief or the or the meaning that I chose to attach to it and you know, and I've been doing that and not, I, I don't regret what I did. I don't regret how I responded. Um, but I am analyzing that. And now I'm emotionally detached from it a lot more. Um, by the way, this is the first time listening. I'm, I'm talking about a thing that happened a week ago. And so, uh, you may be like, uh, what's he referring to? Uh, the short version is I decided to cut ties with a, uh, a comedy troupe that I had performed with for a long time because, I didn't feel that they treated me with um, the respect and dignity that I think anybody deserves. But again, that's the meaning I'm telling myself. Who knows what objective reality is? Do we want to dive dive in dive in on that one on uh, on February twenty eighth? Huh? A little. Is there such thing as objective reality, or is it all relative? Is it all made up? Seems like there's some objective reality, you know, like like gravity seems seems pretty pretty hardcore. You know, I'm not sure how much of that unless it's uh unless the only reason there is gravity is because we as the human race have collectively decided to believe in gravity. Okay, I don't know what just happened here. Uh the, the, the Paul Green Comedy Podcast has just turned into some sort of uh Neil Tyson Grassy uh Degrassi uh uh, sp- speculative, uh, metaphysical, uh, theory, philosophy. Okay. So, but you know, anyway, talking to my buddy and, and just talking about the attitude that is required to be successful, um, especially being successful in the way that we want to be successful. Um, You know, it seems like there is a pathway for just being a jerk and being a tyrant and controlling and manipulating and using fear. And, you know, I, I wish that I could say that that never works, but it actually seems to work quite effectively. Um, I think it's not optimal. If you look historically, it seems to be the most tyrannical who, and, and the most psychotic who seem to amass the greatest amounts of power, more or less. But is that what I'm after? 
Am I after uh, control and power and being able to manipulate thousands or millions into, uh, you know, behaving despicably? No, that's not actually what I'm really about. So for me, what does success look like? And how would I choose to obtain that success? And I am a big believer that I want to work with people who are, who dream big, who think big, who act big, who conduct themselves with gratitude and grace and kindness and respect to everybody. Um, and who really truly want the best for other people. And that doesn't mean that they are pushovers or that they are weak or that they are easily taken advantage of. Um, they also are very authentic and very honest and will put their foot down and will not allow themselves to be mistreated and will set boundaries, very clear boundaries. And if those boundaries are not respected, then they will set boundaries even harder and, um, and detach if needs be. And, and they're also talented and artistic and creative and those are the people that I not only want to surround myself by, but that I want to be and that I'm becoming. And with that, I'm also choosing to seek a level of success that would allow me to have some incredible experiences and opportunities and I'm really trying hard to go about it the 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 most pure and authentic way that I that I can in as much as I am an authentic person and I don't even know the answer to that you know I'm sure I'm have my uh full of shit moments <laughs> like anybody else and my delusions and my uh and my um delusions of grandeur and my inability to look at reality, my ego, all of that fun stuff. But I'll tell you what, I I have done a tremendous amount of self-reflection and self-analysis and looking inward and healing and uh and trying to grow and improve and hone my craft and hone my character and be very honest with myself as much as my ego will allow. And no, it's going well. And I do really feel, man, it's almost hard to say out loud, but I really do feel that something very big and awesome is is happening and is coming my way and I'm really excited don't know what it is don't know what it looks like and I wouldn't want to know anyway I want to be surprised and just embrace whatever it is that all of this is leading to because um, you know there have been some very, very dark, dark days. And um, but I'm still here and I'm still in it and still ambitious and hopeful as ever. And I still have big dreams and I'm still going for them and, and I'm living them. I'm seeing the small little fruits, the small little serendipities and the cool little experiences here, a show in Missouri here, getting picked up 
you know, to do a casino tour here, uh, headlining a comedy show over here. This booker's now excited about me. They want to do a comedy special here. I'm flying out to uh, New Jersey to do a show here, going over to San Diego to do a show here. Um, you know, had a conversation yesterday about producing a, a, a comedy fundraiser again with with a um, with a nonprofit that I had produced a show with like four four or five years ago before COVID, and you know now we've reconnected and um. You know what's interesting about about that situation I just talked about? It's it's so it's so interesting. Again, I'm so wrapped up about this situation that happened to me a week and a half ago, and I'm so sorry I keep talking about it. But it was so it was so significant to me what happened and how I've responded to it. And now, like everything that is happening is almost like an example of the contrast. To how it should be like how I was treated and then how all of these other people are treating me and just the the contrast between the two examples and it's like I'm getting more and more examples of people in my life who are treating me well beyond well and in some cases even people that you know we've had our rough patches in the past but it's still examples of like how you can you can have disagreements with people. You can not be on the same page sometimes. You can you can sometimes just straight F up or you can just, you know, not you know, not all human beings show up their absolute best at all times, and fair enough. Um so the situation here is Back when I was living in L.A., I actually met this woman on a dating app. We went on a date. And she wasn't interested. <laughs> I, You know, I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't like, oh, my gosh, she's the woman of my dreams and, you know, disappointed. I, you know, I thought she was attractive, but, you know, whatever. It, it At that point, it wasn't that big of a blow. I didn't, you know, I wasn't thinking it was anything but she told me that she runs this nonprofit and that she thinks I would be a good asset to the nonprofit and I was like well that's cool so what she wanted to do was start producing comedy fundraisers and like will you help me put on a comedy fundraiser I was like that sounds great so we put on a comedy fundraiser and Something happened to where my insecurities got triggered. And this is a situation to where I go, this was all on me. And I'll tell you one thing about Paul Green. I am not a perfect man. (laughs) But I take ownership of my shit. And in this situation, I chose to as as our professional relationship developed you know i was helping her with her charity there were a couple of interactions where i started to feel a certain way that she hadn't reciprocated a romantic interest in me even though she was totally transparent like she did everything the right way in that situation she treated me with respect honesty she still wanted to work with me. She still thought I was a good guy. I'm just not for her romantically. And we had worked together for a while, but then I I started to like, there was something where I think I maybe made another stab at it. I don't remember all the details. And she turned it down and it triggered all kinds of insecurities that I have, stories, the meaning that I attached to it. And quite frankly, I got snooty with her. Like the next time uh, I saw her, I I was really standoffish and I was kind of doing that passive aggressive punishment thing, kind of like, "Eh, well, you said this and I'm going to be 
you know, and it was so immature on my part. And she, first of all, didn't deserve to be treated that way. She didn't actually do anything wrong. Actually didn't do anything wrong. It's like, I was the, I was the head case in this one. I was being narcissistic. I was the one who was letting my ego drive my bus. And she called me out on it one night. Just like, what is this? And I was guilty as charged. You know, I tried to wiggle out of it for a little bit. And then finally I just been like, nope, she's absolutely right. You know exactly what you've been doing. You've been a, you've been a total dick. And she didn't deserve that. So what are you going to do here? Are you going to show up? Man up, apologize, be honest, or are you going to continue to be, uh, well, no, and, 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 you know, whatever. It manned up. I said, you know what? This is what's going on. I apologize. Blah, 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 blah. And <laughs> that was maybe four years ago. She and I are still friends to this day. You know, not like we hung out a bunch, you know, whatever. I, I stepped away from the organization and, you know, we went a year or two without having any interaction. And then um, I had reached out to her about a year ago and just to see how she was doing and caught up with her. And now we're back putting a show on together. And I'm just like, that's how it should be. Like, We weren't on the same page about some stuff. I felt a certain way about it. She still treated me with respect. And she still treated me with compassion. Even when I was being the dick. She still... respected my humanness. And... You know, so that's somebody who, even though we weren't on the same page, is somebody who I'm still more than happy to have in my life and to work with and to collaborate with. Um, and so, you know, with this last situation where I didn't actually do anything wrong, I wasn't the dick. Um, and was treated with such disrespect. And I'm just like, I can't do that. That I can't do. Um, I got to set a boundary here. And I set a very, very firm boundary. So... To go back to what me and my buddy last night were talking about in terms of how do successful people behave and how do they show up and how do they treat people and um and who do I want to surround myself with? What's the type of energy of people who I want to give my energy to and who I want to support? Um who would never dream of treating me with you know disrespect or selfishness or you know if something seemed off they would just talk to me like a person hey what's going on this seems a little off hey I don't know what it is but let's talk about it um and I'll tell you it's all leading to something I'm not trying to be all prophetic here, and it's very vulnerable to say that, and I get it. And again, every every self-help book that I've ever read or every TikTok motivational 30-second clip says, don't ever, don't ever let people know what you're up to. Don't tell them about it because then people are going to try to sabotage it. People are going to try to blah, 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 try to bring you down or whatever. I'm going like, people have already tried to bring me down. People have already tried to sabotage me. So... not scared anymore of that 
and I'm just, I'm just excited and I can just feel an energy leading towards something. And I think the biggest energetic shift has been within me having gone through these experiences that I've gone through and have had, and having to have had, having to had, having to have grown and matured. Whoa. I just had to. I've matured. And, uh, you know, and uh, just really excited to to see what it's all leading to and um, very much looking forward to it and just full of joy, full of ambition. And I've weathered enough storms to know, yeah, it's not it's not always going to be pretty and there's always going to be the ups and downs. But overall, it just feels like the the ship is now cruising in the right direction and I'll get to see uh, what what it all is leading towards. And I will bring you along on that journey. All of you dreamers out there who are experiencing your own ups and downs and trying to uh, figure out this crazy thing called life. So to all of you out there, you have my love, you have my support. And if I've ever been a dick to you, I'm sorry about that. And I mean that. So... All right, everybody, let's go get those dreams. February 28th, 2024, the Paul Green Comedy Podcast, episode 91. I love you all so much. Let's have a great day, and I will talk to you tomorrow.